So we'll kick things off today with Captain Blood, and I suppose we could have filled up most of this episode with Errol Flynn movies, he having swashbuckled more than most, but this 1935 film was his first major Hollywood outing. His Dr. Peter Blood had put his swashbuckling days behind him, but is nonetheless unjustly swept up with the rest of the traitors to the crown of King James II after having the temerity to treat one of them, and is shipped off to the West Indies for life in slavery. In Port Royal, Jamaica, he catches the eye of Olivia de Havilland's Arabella, the daughter of Lionel Atwell's Colonel Bishop. She manoeuvres a position for blood as a physician to the colony's governor, which affords him more freedom than the other slaves, but nothing like enough for him not to make a plan for complete freedom for him and his fellow slaves, and a life of piracy, which is soon enacted in the chaos of a Spanish attack. After a successful career of bigandry, it's an entanglement with Arabella that brings blood back to the waters of Port Royal, and the changing political climate makes for some interesting opportunities for blood and his crew. Now, I'm in a slightly unusual position with Captain Blood, who are missus, um, inasmuch as despite watching this less than a week ago, I can't remember much of the way of details about it. Um, I know that I liked it well enough, uh, but I don't know if I can give you much in the way of rationale for that, but, well, here goes. Um, Flynn's a charming lead, and his chemistry with De Havilland would go on to be the backbone of a bunch of films, and it's a pretty interesting story, and Michael Curtis, later of Casablanca fame, keeps things moving along well enough despite this being one of the longer films on today's roster. I suppose in the context of this particular podcast, I could take issue with it rather downplaying the whole piracy aspect of this pirate, taking, I suppose, an understandable focus on the revenge against an unjust king and his lickspittles angle that's a less complex moral selling point, and one sure to please Glasgow Ranger fans the world over. In short, it's an enjoyable start to proceedings. Uh, Drew, what do you make of this one? Yeah, this is the first time I've seen an Errol Flynn film. I have been aware from for a long time, uh, the good mm. and the bad, uh, and I've never mm-hmm. really... I've seen clips, particularly of him playing Robin Hood and things, and yeah, so I kind of thought, right, I know he's famous, I don't really know why, and and I get this, I get to this film, I was like, I kind of get it now, because yeah. he's this really good looking guy, it's kind of weird to see him without the moustache though, because I've, I've so yeah. very rarely seen him without <laughs> the moustache, but he really does have a lot of charisma, he's got a swagger, but it's kind of... It's like we can a uh, uh, known smirk quite a lot of times, so you can see yeah. why he was this charismatic, captivating screen presence. It's, it wasn't by chance. So he's pretty. It's a pretty entertaining thing. Certainly, you're right that this film downplays somewhat the the piracy aspect, but that's something we're going to come on to in future films where further films where piracy basically is not in it at all. So I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, knock yeah. this film particularly for it because it does have piracy it's just yes. less the focus it's it's, a, yeah, it's an entertaining film for a film marketed considered to be a swashbuckling film not a lot of buckles are actually swashed <laughs> yes and for i'm so aware of errol flynn being famous for his sword play in particular uh, yeah, there was one sword fight in this film that I can recall, and it happens two thirds of the way in. <laughs> yes, when he's fighting the French captain on the the coast because he went back on the the details of their contract. Yeah, which is weird. And also, talking of weird, forty minutes into the film of this Australian man giving this very strong kind of upper class English accent, suddenly <laughs> says, "I'm Irish." Right? Of course you are, buddy. Of course you okay. are. Okay. <laughs> That this is a irrelevant to the story, but B no, no you're not, you're not Irish. <laughs> Why is this line in here? And then it mentions it a few times <laughs> after that. That was strange. Yeah, but yeah, there's a there's a real good chemistry with him and Olivia the Hamlet. I'd actually like to have seen them be on screen more together because it works so well. Particularly yeah. that final scene when she's yes. overacting deliberately when the governor <laughs> comes back to uh, Port Royal. And he's been made the new governor, and he's just sitting hiding his face, and she's overacting, <laughs> and he's kind of mugging away there. And that's really yeah. entertaining. There's really good chemistry there. It's just it's a good adventure film. It's, it's a fun film. I think perhaps it's the only downside is it's not quite as swashbuckly as a swashbuckly film ought to be. Particularly one yes. marketed as a swashbuckling film. <laughs> but I can absolutely see why Errol Flynn was the star that he was, even just on this one film alone. Sometimes like you can be disappointed by someone like kind of wonder what the fuss was about you, but you watch this like, yeah, okay, I get why he was a star at that time, yeah, uh, and that's quite nice to see. Beyond that, I, I have nothing much more to say. It's just a it's an entertaining film, so it's a good start. 
Yes, that's positive.